is the percent composition of each element here in barium hydroxide? Well, the first step of that process is to first find the mass of this entire compound, and then we can find the percentages. All right, so I'm going to create this little table to help us out. Bam. So the first step, I need to write down the elements that I see in the compound. So I see barium, Ba, I see oxygen, and I see hydrogen. The next step will be to write down now the number of atoms of each element in the compound. So this is where the subscripts come into play. So at the bottom of barium here, there is an invisible one, and that means that there's one barium. The bottom of oxygen here, there is a one. However, this oxygen is part of the hydroxide polyatomic anion, and we have two of those hydroxides. So if in each single hydroxide, there's one oxygen, but then you have two hydroxides in total, well then you'd have two oxygens, right? In other words, all you'd have to do is take this subscript and multiply it by that subscript to find the total number of oxygen. So that would be two. And the same thing for hydrogen. The subscript there is one, but since it's part of hydroxide, we've got to multiply it by the two outside, so that would be two hydrogens in total. Then we're going to take those number of atoms, and now we're going to multiply it by the mass of each particular element. That's where the periodic table comes in, so let's take a look. So the periodic table here says that barium has a mass of 137.33. Now that could be in grams per mole if you're calculating molar mass, or in AMU if you're calculating molecular mass, right? Oxygen is 16, and then hydrogen is about 1.01. So let's write that in. So 137.33, 137.33 for barium, oxygen was about 16, and then hydrogen is about 1.01. Now all we need to do is then multiply the rows to find the total mass of the element in the compound, right? So the total mass of barium in the compound is 137.33. The total mass of oxygen here is about 32, all right? And then the total mass of hydrogen here is about 2.01, uh, actually 2.02, right? So when we add those column this column now together that will find the total mass of the entire compound so when you add that together it's 171.35 so this mass can either be in grams per mole or amu it really does not matter since we're calculating percent composition all right or mass percent in other words um, so just leave it unit less it really does not matter okay we'll leave the units out to make it cleaner but there's one more step to this process for percent composition or mass percent so i'm going to add another column to the table so to now calculate the percent composition or the mass percent, it's very, very simple. Now for barium, we're going to take barium's total mass in the element, 137.33, and we're going to divide that value by the total mass of the compound, all right, 171.35. And this is actually a very simple part over whole, right, percent calculation. We're going to take that and multiply it by 100, and that will tell us the percent. It's just the mass of barium divided by the mass of the compound. That's it. Hence why we needed to find the mass of the compound first, right? So we'll take that 137.33 divided by 171.35, and we come up with a percentage here of about 80, 80 point, I don't know, 1, 5-ish, all right, percent. So that's now the uh, percent composition of barium. Same thing for oxygen. We're going to take the total amount of oxygen, which is the 32. So you're always taking this column, okay, not this number. 32, you're going to divide it then by the 171.35. Again, same thing as part over whole. Multiply that by 100, and you're going to get a percentage of about 18.68 or so percent. That's the percent for oxygen. And then the last but not least, same thing for hydrogen, right? I don't know why I keep wanting to do 2.01, but it's 2.02. All right, 171.35 times that bad boy by 100. And you're going to find a value of about 1.18 you know, or so, 1.18, all right? Now, what should happen is that, now consider, right, that these percentages are all rounded. I mean, the percentages, right, they, they're non-rational. So when you add them up, though, what should happen is when you add these together, it should equal 100%. The only reason why it might not equal 100% is because of the rounding. But it should be like 99.99 or 100%. 0 0.01, you know, something. But if you took the exact answers and answered them, you'd get exactly 100. Thank you very much for tuning in. I really do hope this helped. All right. Let us know if it did. All right. We really appreciate your feedback and we appreciate your viewership. Thank you so much.